Alright guys, welcome back to more PES 5 Master League action on this final day of the season. Today we are against West Ham. West Ham need to win to stay up. But, I mean, I suppose it is possible they could actually still win and not stay up. But, pretty much, they'll need to win if they have any chance of staying in this league next season. Big matches happening up and down the country today. There is some huge games going on, um, in, mostly uh, to do with Europe, though. Um, I think we've got like Chelsea v Arsenal. Arsenal like seventh in the table, needing the points. Um, Manchester United they're already out, as you saw in the well. You should know in the last part. Spoilers. <laughs> um, they can't make Europe, but um, I think we United. Um, they're, pl they're, pl they're playing at home. I can't remember who they're playing actually now. Um, <laughs> there's so many. I can't keep up with it. There's so many big... I think there's only like two games that just don't really matter to do um, in the league. So, um, yeah, it is a huge game week. I think Newcastle got Middlesbrough. Uh, Aston Villa with a derby against Birmingham. Um, and Aston Villa, you know, depending on what happens in this game today, it's first versus 15th. And 16th is already down, which is Birmingham, and there's one spot left, which is the 15th position, which West Ham occupied. They won their last game against Rangers to put themselves in this position. They only technically need a point, but it would mean Birmingham having to beat Aston Villa by, I think, something like seven goals for that to happen. So, yeah, Schwartz is starting this one. He is playing... Um, up front instead of Torres, so he's going to play alongside Mutu. Shimizu is also starting this one instead of um, Iniesta, so there's a couple of changes there. Um, and yeah, I think that's about it. Uh, it is just, like I say, I'll, I've said it loads of times, I'll say it again, it's been a crazy season, anything can happen. And anything in this series usually does happen. That is an offside from Ronaldo. He is starting on the left side today, which he usually does. Um, yeah, Risa on the left back, Ramos right back, Colacini Puyol, uh, Czech. Oh yeah, that's another thing. Ma no Marshall today. Marshall is um, not even on the bench. We had, we don't have a goalkeeper backup for this game. We've decided not to bother with that. We've put uh, I think like Joe Cole, Ronaldinho, and I think Robin into the. Uh, I think did we bring Rubinho? To? I'm not sure if we bring Rubinho too actually. I think I think Rabinho might be not on the bench, but I know Robin is definitely on the bench. Um, if we want him to be, if we want him to be in this game. So yeah, what is? I don't even see what happened there. Okay, but West Ham have got a free kick out of it. So uh, yeah, as it stands. Um, even if West Ham draw this game, they're still pretty much going down. So they need the win desperately bad. We decided in the last game that we're just going to give them hell. We're just going to give them absolute hell in this game and just go for it. So that is what we're doing today. Uh, Mutu is the uh, top scorer in the league. He's got like, I think, 21 goals this season. So maybe you might argue that he has had a pretty um, quiet season. Um, but he's, you know, he's actually scored 21 in the league. So, to be fair to him, that's good. And here he is again. Oh, that's the first opportunity. And, oh, Schwartz there. Here is Schwartz again. He's going in. Yeah, let's back out. Here's Mutu. It's Mutu. Oh, there's got to be something. Oh, it's Schwartz. He puts it wide. West Ham cling on. Just need to... We'd like to know how it's going in the other parts of the country. <laughs> but um, I don't even think at half-time we can see that. So just have to um, bear with us until the final whistle to see what is happening. Well, here's Mutu. Here's Schwartz. Uh, Gerrard's not on the ball there. Rio Coca reminds kind of reminds me of this game, it's like last game of the season, but um, uh, FA Cup final 2006 vibes here. Liverpool v West Ham, and like seeing the a lot of the West Ham players in particular. Here's Ramos. 
Oh, ball through there didn't make its way through at all. There's barely, why is Reese in like the defensive midfield area <laughs> sort of position? What is he doing there? That's over the top. That is going to be picked up by Czech, who is going to throw the ball back out. The Birmingham, the thing is, Birmingham have been getting results just lately. And Shimizu, oh, that was just going to bounce for Schwartz, but the keeper got up to it in time. And, oh, oh, that's a foul against Musu, that one. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, they've been picking up results. It's like this weird thing where, like, a team that's struggling against relegation, they get officially relegated, and then they start to play, like, better all of a sudden. Here's Gerard. It's offside. Oh, come on. He didn't... That didn't even look it. Unless it's going by the Schwartz run. I think it was Schwartz there. Which kind of is a bit crap if it did, but, yeah. What can you do? Here's Harewood. It's taken out a player. Here's Puyol. Here's Ramos. And it's Schwartz here. He's done well there. Here's Shimizu. Liverpool have got options here. It's Risa. Risa. It's Risa. Yeah, hits it with his trusted left boot, but can't make anything quite happen there. And there's possibly a chance for West Ham here. Uh, Gerard says, you know what, just give me the ball, if that's what he says. <laughs> and, uh, a summer of transfers, well, possible transfers, there might not be too many players that will be signing, actually. I mean, we've got a lot of budget, but, <laughs> you know, we've pretty much signed just about everyone, haven't we? He's Mutu, he's brought down, is that a red card? Is that red? No, he's going to be let off with that. That was last man. Oh, my. Ronaldo, he's going to take it. It's Mutu. Oh. It's Ramos. It's coming in. It's Schwartz. It's over the bar. West Ham are clinging. Kind of reminds me of the last game, in a way, where we just had chance after chance, couldn't get anything, and then the second half... Well, something happened. <laughs> Let's see. A few opportunities in that first half there. West Ham have hung on so far. But they would need to do it in the second half and steal the game. <laughs> Which, um... I don't want to jinx too much, but that's what would have to happen. As long as Liverpool are on the ball and in control, West Ham cannot do anything about that. It's Mutu! Oh, Carroll gets down to it, threw ball into him, had to be quick. There wasn't much power to be fair, but it, it needed sort of placement because there wasn't enough time for Mutu to really take it under control there. It's got to go out wide here. Oh, Ramos has committed the foul there. And that's uh, cut out here, Schwartz. Schwartz is still going. In fact, he's still going. No, you can't get that ball to Gerard to kind of hold things up a little bit. Always plays well, though, Schwartz. I don't re really remember too many bad games of him. There's Risa. And it's Colacini, and it's Puyol, and it's Gerard, and it's Ramos. And Ramos is going in. West Ham got to defend. They do that just about. There's a foul there, and I think it's on Shimizu. They don't like that one. Ooh, that's bad. Could have swung it in. Mm, just a lot of the time, though, I, I, you've maybe find that oh Ramos's shot is on target to be fair um, 
a lot of the time you probably find that the defenders probably get to it. I, I, I prefer like the corner kicks personally. <laughs> um, swinging them in possibly at the near post. You can score quite a few goals from that I find anywhere. Check gathers up. Just over an hour played. Oh, here's Gerard with a little bit of skill there, and it's it's not going to amount to anything. <laughs> it's not going to amount to anything. It's going to be West Ham's again. Ronaldo is coming across for whatever reason. Oh, that's going to be Liverpool's. Uh, here's Gerard. I think somebody brought it up. Um, not too long back, like Gerard doesn't really score that much anymore. Like he used to score loads in like season one, season two sort of time. Um, it's probably because we've put him onto the right side of the midfield instead of like attacking midfield. Um, but yeah, he's yeah, he's just kind of. I I think we do well anywhere with that in mind, so it's not a big deal. Probably people want to see him score more, but I think he's been all right. Nonetheless, it's just when he misses penalties occasionally. That's that's why we don't give him the penalties anymore because he misses missed. I think like <laughs> is it like season one, season two, time season three, he missed like too much, so we just stopped giving him penalties. <laughs> Ronaldo, if he's playing, is in charge of the penalties. If not, it's pretty much Mu to. And here's Schwartz. Oh, tries to take on the defender. Doesn't do that. West Ham with a good opportunity here. Oh, that's awkward. There's going to be a couple of changes. Ronaldo's going to be one of them to come off. And um, I think the other one is... Uh, was it Shimi Was it Shimizu? You know, it, it's like there's so much going on. I... I, I it was like two seconds ago when we made this choice, <laughs> and now we j I just like don't know anymore. It just eludes me because there's so much going on. Yeah, Juckall is on. Oh yeah, yeah. No, it was Kaiser. I'm getting I'm getting them mixed up. I'm getting them. I always sometimes get Kaiser and Sh Shimizu mixed up for some reason. It's uh, it's not good. Here's Rio Coco. Here's Harewood. And it's Bellinghausen, and he goes in, and the header. Oof, he's not going to trouble check. Belly in there. Probably one of the best chances West Ham have had. And there's not much time left. It's just going to be like the weirdest thing if like... Oh, that's bad. It's Mutu. Oh. Was it Gerard? Yeah, it was Gerard there. But the problem is Gerard had two men on him. I don't know if he could have really done anything, and by the time he'd probably done anything, um, the defence would have probably caught up with him. So it was it needed to be passed pretty much. It's Collins. It's Cohen. It's Ferdinand, and it stops by Risa and there's some weird passing going on here but it's well it, it sort of worked out every time Gerard I swear every time Gerard gets the ball these days he does lose it a lot and again I think it's something to do with him playing on that side or something maybe we should consider his position problem is Iniesta plays attacking midfield usually and he plays really well there so um, it's not something that we're too concerned about Really. And there is potential here for possibly a late goal. And Joe Cole is not going to be in there. I think this is just going to be an, a nil-nil, unfortunately. And it is going to be a nil-nil. That's the final whistle of the season. Nil-nil. Not enough for West Ham. Unless Birmingham have beaten Aston Villa by about seven goals. It ain't happening. But it looks like West Ham are now down. So, yeah. Gerard man of the match. Eh. 
I'm not I'm not I'm not convinced about that one myself. I think Schwartz was maybe our best. I mean I know there was no goals, but uh, I think to be honest, Risa maybe he was he was all over the place doing well. He was getting the ball and stuff. Um I think we've got work to do though next season, possibly in the next uh, summer window, because I feel like a lot of our play lately is we've been attacking, we've been trying to get at teams, but like that game there there wasn't really many many chances overall um and i kind of feel like maybe a change of formation is needed possibly we like to avoid the 4-3-3 because that felt like back in the day it was a little too overpowered um but i don't know we'll we'll think about it but um yeah that that was it, it was a boring poor game west ham some chances here but didn't look like they were ever gonna score and we never really looked like we were ever gonna score um, to be honest, but well, that's that. Well, before anything, we have got a ranking announcement, and um, I'm not going to show you the. Well, that's what it looks like, but the problem is the icons are in the wrong position. So yeah, I'm just going to tell you now that, <laughs> that the Premier League is top at 153 for the um, league rankings. Um, league Four is actually second on 151. The Spanish league is on 103. So almost a 50 point difference there uh, and the italian league is on 101 so yeah that's that but this is the team ranking liverpool 157 uh, manchester united despite the season they've had are on 95 and in second chelsea are third juventus are down to fourth barcelona fifth real madrid and ajax are both six um inter milan eighth ac milan ninth ac milan won the uefa cup and Bayern munich are tenth so yeah, that is that. We got 11th there with Newcastle. That's pretty close. Uh, Arsenal are down to 13th. AS Roma are also joined 11th, by the way. Uh, Spares 14th. And from there, we're probably just going to scroll down to the bottom and see. Ooh, what's happening there? Manchester City are up to 37th. Celtic. Be interesting to see who comes up. Uh, Osasuna out of the West with 18. Uh, Pez United, oh, only 26, but they've gone up. You know what I mean, they were so close to staying up the other year as well. It was such a shame. Other than Pez United, it looks like it's Bolton there with 30 uh, for the worst team um, in the sort of English divisions, I guess you want to call it. Borussia Dortmund with only 30. Oh, my days. So, some retired player data right here. And there is quite a lot. Oof. We've got, like, Perez here from Arsenal, Veron, um, Z, Roberto, Verrera. I mean, they're all, like, 36, 37, 38, 39, so you can understand. Perez was, is 39 now. Woo! Balak there, 36. Nesta, 36. So, a lot of these are going to probably start regening eventually. So, uh, yeah, Jorginho, 37. Makalili, Helguera, um, Seedorf, Paletta. Wow, man, this is crazy stuff. Uh, we got one there with Middlesbrough's parlor. Uh, Savage as well, a Blackburn. And uh, that appears to be about it. Uh, Zavi <laughs> with uh, Middlesbrough as well. There's 39 currently. So, yeah. Um, got to get them regions in when they're there. And the teams that are coming up and the teams that are going down are definitely going to be West Ham and Birmingham. So... Yeah, it looks like Birmingham didn't do enough to help West Ham out <laughs> today. But was it really ever going to happen? Probably not. Um, Bolton and Blackburn are back up into the top division. So welcome back, Bolton and Blackburn. Anyway, guys, it is time for pre-season. Just before we get into looking into the um, results of the final fixtures and whatnot. AC Milan, however, they won the UEFA Cup. So we're going to play them in uh, match seven of the, um, this uh, pre-season that's coming up. Um, um, the first one is going to be against Glee Pelati. So, yeah, that's one. That's one of the uh, special teams, by the way. So if you go across, you get all the all-star teams here. And you always get, like, these two at the end that pop up. So we've got Glee Pelati, and then we've got the Oxen as well. But you look at the Oxen stats. Holy hell, that is... Those are good stats. <laughs> um, so, yeah, and Glee Pelati's are not so good. So we'll see about that one. Uh, next up, we got Galatasaray. Uh, I haven't played them, I think, for a few seasons or something like that. So I've decided to go with that one. We haven't seen... I don't think we've seen Dortmund for a while. And just looking at the um, the, the league standings um, just like a few minutes ago, I noticed 
uh, Dortmund. So I'm just like, yeah, you know what, let's play Dortmund. We haven't played Manchester City in like forever on this series because they were relegated, I believe, in season three and we've not seen them since in the league. So I'm like, okay, we're going to play Manchester City. Um, I don't think we... We've played them in, in a pre season unless I'm really am forgetting. I don't think we've played them for a very long time, or did we play them? I don't know. We're gonna play them anywhere, you know. Let's just do it. I don't know. I, I've I've not had time to really ask it, you guys what you want to see in pre season, so I apologise if this doesn't live up to standards or anything. But yeah, uh, and then finally, um, the Weld All Stars are um, going to be the other one and that is in match six so yeah big game against them coming up so that should be a pretty interesting pre-season i think i could have spaced the two special ones out but we're just going to go with them and get them done straight away and then we're just going to move on to the other ones and i'm thinking with this pre-season possibly the first six games could be all played in different stadiums possibly um you know, let's maybe see some stadiums we haven't seen before, possibly. Let's do like a pre-season tour or something. Well, this is what it looked like on the final day of the season. Oh my days, what is that result right there? Arsenal 3, Chelsea 4. For some reason, it reverses it. Chelsea were at home for it. Um, but yeah, that's crazy. Arsenal have missed out on Europe, though, definitely with that result. Um... Birmingham against Aston Villa was 3-2, so it wouldn't have mattered if West Ham had won in the end. Um, Aston Villa beat them 3-2 anyway. Um, we United actually did win their game against Fulham. Uh, Rangers, they beat uh, Wigan. Um, oh yeah, it's, uh, we United were at home. Uh, Rangers were at home. It's it, For whatever reason, it reverses it, and I don't get why. Does anybody ha actually have an answer to that? Why does the game reverse the final fixture after it's been done? It's weird. Um... Yeah, uh, Everton were at home to Spurs and won 2 1. Manchester United were at West Ham and they won uh, 4 1. Newcastle looks like they've secured Europe. They won at home against uh, Middlesbrough. So let's look at the final league standings. So, yeah, this is the final league table, and we United did finish second in the end there. So, uh, well done to them. You know what I mean? They've come a long way. They've come a long way of we United, and they've. Um, Got 14 plus goal difference, which is four more than Chelsea, uh, and finished on 52. So it, it it's good when you think there's a possible 90 points up for grabs, but you know we United only finished on 56. I mean we finished on 76. We're only 14 off the max. We went another uh, league season unbeaten. Actually, I didn't realise that. I didn't realise we'd gone another league season unbeaten. Uh, we won 23 and drew seven and lost none. We scored 74. We only conceded 11. Um, so more than happy with those stats. I think the best we wasn't it the best we did. We like only conceded like three in a season. I think it was like season five or something or season six. Like we we just barely conceded anything. We, we finished on a plus uh, goal difference of plus sixty three. Um, Chelsea finished third. They were like hanging around like seventh or eighth a few weeks ago, and they've managed to finish third with 52 points. Newcastle also finished on 52 points. 15 wins for them, same as Chelsea and We United. Seven draws as well. And then the eight losses to go with it. Um, so, yeah. Uh, we United, they wouldn't have finished second if they didn't get that draw against us the, um, in the other game week. Uh, I think it was game week 28. Um... If they'd have lost, they would have finished up in fourth, but still that would have been good enough. If Chelsea would have finished up in second. Just really well done to We United. They've done really well there. Uh, Everton finished up in fifth on 50 points. They lost 10 games, but it was enough. Um, plus 13 goal difference. So their defence has not been bad. But you consider some of the teams around them have, um, have got less goals than that. Um, Manchester United, though, I mean, look at that. Eighth position. That is crazy. I mean... Okay, the six points off from finishing in the bottom half, but plus 17 goal difference. They only conceded 41. You know, there's a couple of teams around them, like Everton conceded 40, we United 40. Um, they scored 58. It's just 10 losses. I mean, Everton lost 10 losses, got 10 losses, but managed to finish up in fifth. Tottenham down to six, but it was enough for them to um, secure a European place, mostly thanks to Chelsea, one of their London neighbours, <laughs> beating Arsenal. Um, yeah, Arsenal just met. Arsenal were second, like, I don't know, two game weeks ago or something like that. And now 
they're finishing at seventh and just totally out of Europe for next year. It's just madness what is happening in this league these days. Moving down to the bottom, though, this is what the final league table looks like. Middlesbrough finish up in 14th. They didn't look like they were going to finish up in that position. It looked like they were probably going to be around about 12th um, by the end of it, but no. The three teams there that have not ever looked in danger this season, though, I think have been pretty much West Brom, Rangers and Wigan. Um, Wigan, I think, maybe were around the bottom for a time, but they've done well. Um, West Brom, another good season from them. They lost 10, they drew 10, and they won 10. <laughs> so, uh, you know, keeping it all even there, plus goal difference of 1. The worst goal difference this season, though, was Birmingham with minus 37. They conceded 67. They only scored at 30. Um, they lost 21 games. That's just... Well, you need better than that. They were 9 off survival, and even then... The, you know the goal difference is not guaranteed so yeah West Ham though I mean they they played well to get it down to the last game but just not enough they are going to be back down into the second division Aston Villa finish up in 13th Fulham at 12th and that is the league table we're going to look ahead to the other leagues though and uh, this is the Spanish league Mallorca finished bottom there with Osasuna of course no relegation can take place in this leagues because there is no second division to them um, but we're going to move to the top Barcelona are champions of Spain once again Villarreal second only two points behind they give Barcelona a bit of a run for their money there so uh, well done to them Real Madrid finish up in fourth Sevilla are third Valencia are fifth Atletico Madrid are sixth uh, and Athletic Bilbao at the final day drop out of Europe. So that kind of sucks for them. Moving on to Syria A. Juventus are top by 11 points. And uh, Inter Milan, 55. Uh, AC Milan, they are UEFA Cup winners. They finish up in third. So they've just missed out on the automatic spot for Europe. Yeah, that's a point. Uh, we United have got on the automatic spot for next season. So... Yeah, that's really good. And the other one was Villarreal. They've got an automatic spot, so yeah. Um, Roma are uh, down to fourth, but they finish in a qualifying position for Europe. So do Chiva Verona, and so do Parma. So that that is that. Moving down to the bottom here, like, oh, Lazio, Fiorentina have missed out. Regina and Cagliari are the bottom two teams there. Of course, they cannot move down or anything. League 4... Um, Olympiacos and Porto were the worst teams there. It's just the 23 points for Olympiacos. Porto was 24. Dortmund finishing 12th there, one that we're playing in pre-season. We've got Fenerbahce, then Benfica, then Club Bruges. Panathinaikos are 14th. Moving up to the top half, Galatasaray are sitting 4th. Now that's... I think that's kind of strange because I think weren't they one of the teams that were just like struggling near the bottom like pretty much nearly every season they were hanging around like 14th or something um, and now all of a sudden they're fourth and they've got a qualifying position for Europe so well done there I wasn't expecting that that's just kind of come out of the blue <laughs> um, Ajax are champions of 81 points they got more than us they got more <laughs> I think that's the highest I've seen the computer finish on, to be honest. And in this league, we've, with all these good teams, that is some achievement. 27 wins. No draws, but three losses. They scored 89. They scored more than us. They didn't concede um, less than us, though. So they don't, they don't have that one. Uh, but the goal difference is exactly the same. Plus 63 for both of us, but... You know, we we well we we beat I Ajax in the Champions League, so whatever. And elect have finished second. What is going on in this league? All of a sudden, it's usually like Bayern and Ajax, but this is the thing: the more time that goes on in this series, the more weirder things get. So that's kind of something right there. Um, Paris, they are fifth. Um, Stuttgart are six, and PSV moved out of a European spot on the last day, unfortunately, and Marseille finished eighth. So anyway, we're going to move on to the uh, goal and goal assist rankings in the league, and this is how it finished. This is the bottom half of the assist table. Um, Noble there for West Ham got seven, again, not enough to keep them up. Uh, Rabinho for Liverpool, although part of it was Chelsea, uh, managed seven. So I think I think probably all of it was was for Chelsea, wasn't it? I don't know. <laughs> I don't really remember. Uh, Mutu finished up in second for the assist um, 
trophy or whatever you want to call it the, the assist king for the season was actually Ziegler for Everton with 10 so there you go with that one and then moving on to the goals uh, we got Schwartz there I mean he doesn't play every game but he got 10 so it's still good I think he's like 24 now or something is he 24 is he 23 I can't remember but he's even though he's still pretty young he's still bagging goals and you know I mean he's got the likes of Torres to compete with for a, for a spot in the first team etc um, some probably will argue that Mutu should probably just go and then just put Schwartz in there to be honest if I'm honest I, I Mutu if the right deal comes in I think we could let Mutu go but it would be a shame to let him go anyway uh, Drogba got 10 cons for we United got 10 Barros for Aston Villa, 10 goals. Tulalan for Wigan, got 11. Very nicely done. Uh, Mido for Spares, got 11. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm not even going to pronounce that one. For Everton, got <laughs> got 11. Park Ji Sung for Manchester United, got 11. Moving to the top half of the table here. Um, Torres got 11. I feel like he got more than that, but okay. Rubinho, uh, I think most of his came for Chelsea. In fact, I don't even think he scored for us, did he? I don't remember. Um, but yeah, he got 12 nonetheless. Um, Arachi from Manchester United there has got 12. Okay, I didn't even know they had a player called that. I, I, whatever, you know. Um, Nito with 13 for Rangers. Palm or Palm or whatever you want to call him for Arsenal with 15. That's probably why Arsenal were doing so well this season. Um, Owen. Is joint third with 15 for Newcastle. BT for Everton has called 16 goals. Very nice, to be fair. But Mutu is um, number one with 20 goals this season. So um, I think there's been seasons where we've scored more than that. But he's still number one. He might be getting on, but he's he's old but gold, guys. So this is the uh, cup assists. Um, the, 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 the part that nobody really cares about because it's just a cup competition. But we got a few players on here. I'm not really going to go through it all too much. Mutu, Gerard, even Babel got two assists on there. So well done. Martins for us got four. Okay, I didn't realize he played that much in the cup. But um, yeah, apparently so. Um, goals. <laughs> Ronaldinho with three. So you can tell that we're changing the team up in the, in the cup. When you've got like Ronaldinho getting three goals. Uh, Schwartz got, also got three. Um, so that's definitely... Um, 13 goals for Schwartz this season plus whatever he got in the Champions League which we'll look at in a minute uh, Babel got a couple, Ronaldo got a couple Mutu got a couple, Iniesta got a couple um, Robin got, I think Robin was actually for Chelsea though, Joe Cole, Foy even got one, I don't remember that I'd have to look back through it it was that long ago, but yeah Foy well done, you wait for cup assists nobody really cares but here it is for you, I'm just going to gradually just scroll up a little bit and just go to the top. We've got Chimbonda for Wigan there. got two. Uh, Jeremy and Jorginho both got three. So there you go. Luis Garcia for um, Chelsea actually got two there. Uh, goals Essien and Corvia for AS Roma both got four. So that was the top goal scorers there. Um, anything else that stands out? We've got Kaka for AS Roma. got two. Uh, and then some other players. So yeah. <laughs> assists in the Champions League looks like this Kaka couple there wait a minute so Kaka got two assists and then he got okay yeah I mean it makes sense because you can be in the Champions League and then you just get demoted um, to the UEFA Cup if you come third or fourth in the Champions League group stage just demote you into the UEFA Cup that's kind of how the UEFA Cup in this game is made up of um, or Masters shield or trophy or whatever it's meant to be called as, as the game would call it by default but we call it your way for cup of course because we like to be professional guys of course Mafio got three assists this season Rooney also got three that's nice Ronaldo just with a two Ramos got four that just tells you how, how much he gets forward and Genus for Tottenham got six Hmm. Finally, Champions League top goal scorers. Uh, we got Bermuda there for Real Madrid with just the three. Uh, we got a few that got three. Babel got three in the Champions League. I don't remember that. 
Again, it's been such a long time, I don't remember much at all, but well done to Babel. That's that's pretty damn good. Um, Torres with three. Schwartz with three. Moving up a little bit here. Uh, Chutos there for Inter. Of course, a FIFA 2005 legend he is. Uh, Mancini uh, for Barcelona got four. Mido also got four. Genus. Genus is pretty much who's been carrying the team for spares this season by the looks of it. Him and Mido, by the way. Because he's got five there, and he was a top assist, wasn't he? Um, Mido, yeah, four. Uh, Giladino for Manchester United finished second with six. But top was Mutu with 12. He doubled that. He doubled Giladino on that one. So this is how the uh, team stats look for this season. Um, so league, obviously, 23 wins, seven draws, zero losses, blah, blah, blah. We had no red cards or yellow cards, thankfully. Um, winners, blah, blah, blah. But uh, win average uh, was 76.67, which is not our best. Um, definitely not our best, but we can compare that. Obviously, we don't take season one into effect because that was, um, you know, that, that was just in the first division. So there weren't as many games. But our, our win average in the first season in the Premier League was actually better um, with 86.67. Seven. Uh, if you compare that against um, today, we did a little worse. Um, Eighty percent in the season after. That was season three. Uh, season four only seventy-three point three three. That was probably our worst season in the top flight so far. So yeah, but then you compare that against uh, season five. Ninety percent. Just the one loss, not an unbeaten season. I think it was Wigan who destroyed that hub. Um, <laughs> conceded only 13 the season after we conceded 10 less than that only conceded three the entire season that was the season i was talking about earlier 93.33 um just two draws in the league if we'd have won it would have been a straight win season unfortunately we didn't achieve that um doesn't matter though that's definitely like the best we've ever played though and i don't think we'll ever beat that to be honest uh, the season after we conceded 12 we conceded nine more um, and again, that wasn't an unbeaten season, but still, it was a good season. And then this season, a little bit worse. This is why I'm saying maybe we need to change things up, possibly. Um, Rooney, he got four. No, he got four assists, three goals. Who was? So we got twelve. We got twelve for Rubinho, but he was mostly at Chelsea for the majority of the season. Well, half the season. Um, Mutu was obviously the best player for us. Twenty goals, eight assists there. Um, and just uh, bringing up some of the ratings 7.1 for Shimizu there that's not a bad rating Fabregas with a 7 6.9 Mafia yeah I mean that's not bad I mean, it's a high 6 so that's something uh, a lot of these players didn't um, well uh, Roberto Carlos really didn't play did he much so anything so uh, uh, Cavar uh, Cav Cannavaro, sorry, there was with just six, so you know, some players didn't play. Risa, 6.6, .6, one goal, one assist. <laughs> Ronaldo scored six goals, uh, no assists, really? No assists, okay. Um, 7.2 for Iniesta, very nice. 6.3 for Cafu. I think it just gives every player a 6.0 by default, I believe. Um, so there is that. Rooney, seven. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Just the 5.8 for check there. That's kind of disappointing, to be honest. I wouldn't rate him that low down, but that's the season performance. Okay, so development sheet for the season, because I know a lot of you want to look at this and, and take into effect the stats, and it's there um, in, in, in clear as day footage and <laughs> of what it actually is so yeah i'm just gonna get straight on with it and uh, check has improved by like one stat oh actually some of his stats have improved improved more by more than one point um his shot power i'm looking at there and stuff like that so um very good his team work's got up to a 90 as well that's really good um puyo has improved pretty much there got a lot of red stats um, he's 34 he's still improving at 34 uh Colicini, his balance has gone down um his header has gone down his jump has gone down so that's not good um we may have to think about a replacement possibly but we're not going to panic about it stamina's gone up to 94 um stamina is a big thing in this game uh stamina of ramos is 97 so that's really good 
Um, he has improved immensely since. I mean, look at that when he joined, and look at what he is now. That is crazy stuff. Risa, um, his shot power has gone down to a 94, but he's still good. He's pretty. He's still pretty good. Kaiser improved across the board. He's getting better and better. He's just got to keep getting better. He's only 21 still. Gerard, uh, stamina has gone down to a 93. Hmm, that's concerning. Um, mm, we'll see. I mean, if the right, if like I said, if the right. I mean, mm, I was going to say if the right <laughs> money comes in, possibly, I'd consider it. It's not a guarantee, though. Ronaldo has gone up on everything since joining, and he's still continuing to improve. He's 27. He's not somebody you want to get rid of, is he? Uh, Ine Esther, again, improved on everything. Can't see anything there that he's gone down on. Really good. In fact, he's become one of my favourite players in that attacking midfield. He's, he's just so good. He's got... Like, man of the match so many times and stuff. Uh, Torres. Look at that when he joined. That doesn't look right to me. It doesn't... It, I, I feel like his stats were much better than that when he joined. But apparently not. And he's just improved across the board on literally everything. Apart from keeper skills, obviously. And he's just getting better and better. I, I can't... I can't really fault... I mean, he does miss the odd, odd thing here and there. But uh, Mutu. Not the best stats, looking at it in the game but what a player and it is like his stamina is only a 91 but he always seems to want to play every game he always he never gets tired he can play pretty much match after match after match pretty much um his acceleration has gone down one and that's it apart from that maybe he's starting to slow down a little bit but um improved came in midway through season three and since then he's been great uh martins oh Top speed and acceleration has gone down. Dribble speed has also gone down. So he's starting to slow down. He's 27. We brought him in as sort of like a, I don't know, a rotation player. Could sell him on if, you know, if the price is right or whatever or something like that. I wanted him to get more game time. I said, I think I said before, like he might get more game time. Maybe into an, an, the next season or something like that. I'm not too sure about it. We'll see about him. But he, he, there's a very high chance he could be sold. Heitinger is back. And, well, he's just improved. We got rid of him at one point, didn't we? Then he's back again. So, yeah. He's played a solid game here and there. Uh, Van Dijk has not changed. Although he hasn't really had the game time this season to really have done it. Um, didn't Wait a minute. Didn't we bring him in halfway through the season, I think? Didn't we bring him in in, like, January window? So, yeah, he's not really had much time there, has he? Um, so we'll let him off with that. He's 24, but, yeah. Um, Mafio, 28. This guy just gets better. Look at that when he joined compared to now. Just so good. Like... I just I, I'd like to put him in the central midfield area. So he just plays better there. I mean, he can play left back if you want him to, but just brilliant player, just so good. I can't say much about it other than that. Cafu, um, when he joined, I mean, his stamina was an 83. It's gone up to a 90 now, and that for a young player at the age of 20 is really good. I think we may have may have got our Ramos replacement there in that one because I don't remember really two many bad games that he's had in that time so i think uh Cafu could be that player to replace him six years between him and uh ramos there so there's that mascherano good stats have improved can't ask for much more than that um he's been solid again more rotation sort of player fabregas he's 25 now he went on loan to bolton a few seasons back um so it's been a bit iffy whether or not we keep him, but when he plays, he does play well, and he scored some goals for us and stuff like that. So, yeah, again, he's another player that's been a bit, like, wobbly in terms of do we keep him, do we sell him, but he seems to be keeping it afloat just enough. Rooney. Right, okay. These stats do not reflect the way he plays. For, at least for us, he's probably better off in a team like you know, like United, where he would be by default. Maybe he doesn't fit our style of player. I don't know. He played some games and he seemed to be good here and there, but every time he plays, he just doesn't impress too much. I reckon Rooney. Right, we play him in the midfield, don't we? And to be honest, I will hold my hands up and say he probably should just play straight up front. 
and he would probably play better if he did. I mean, look at that. You've got like 95s, 96s, and 97. There's a 98 there on acceleration. I mean, his stamina is 96, but he always seems to run out of, of energy for, for matches. He always seems to need a rest, whereas someone like Mutu just can keep going and going and going. And Mutu's, you know, stamina isn't as good as that. Obviously, there's probably a number of different factors as well that come, in, come into on the um, stamina thing there, you know. There'll be, there'll be more than just stamina that kind of affects it all. I get that. Depends how much he's ran around and stuff like that and, and done stuff. Or, you know, maybe some players burn out quick on the field. And, you know, I'm not sure about Rooney. I'm just going to say that right now. Um, Shimizu, he's just as good as he was back in Season 2. He's still good. He's still here. He's still going. And he get he's getting more game time. All right. It's a, it's on a bit of a rotation basis, but he is getting more and more game time as seasons go on. Schwartz, again, he's one of those who played a lot during the early days. Um, he went to Barcelona. He came back. His stats have improved. He's gotten better. He's still popping in quite a lot of goals each season. So... That's, uh, you know, I'm happy with that. I think maybe about mm, around 15, maybe up to 20 goals this season he scored, maybe. I know he, don't, you know, I know he got a combined of 13 with League and Cup. I don't remember about the Champions League, but I think he may have got on one or two or three or something. So maybe around 15 plus goals, which I'm happy with. Um, he's going to be turning 25 next season. Babel, this guy looks good for the future. Like... Okay, he's 25, he's going to be 26 next season, but he looks good. He looks like he's going to improve, he's going to get better. I mean, some chances he's had in front of goal have not gone quite how you would hope they would, but he has looked really good for a fair season here, so I'm really excited about keeping Babel for the time being. He's not going to be going anywhere. Like I say, unless there is a big, big offer, which I doubt he ain't going to be going anywhere. Marshall, always good just in goal in general i don't remember a bad game he's had everything is improved and he's 27 he's here to stay for now definitely uh company um yeah i mean he's improved um he's 26 he's probably going to get better over the next few years um yeah he doesn't get an awful lot of games but he will I think, like I say, improve and, I don't know, maybe sell if the price was right. Ramon, can't really judge him too much, but his jump has gone down to a 94 and his keeper skills have gone down to a 95. That's not good at the age of 20. We may keep an eye on that in the future. I don't know. I mean, it could, it could be a case of maybe we, I don't know. We, 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 well, to be honest, we need a fair choice keeper, and that is him. We'll keep an eye on him. I'll just say that. Cannavaro has improved. His defence um, has gone up by five. His jump has also gone up by five. So he's getting better. He's only 19. He will improve. So he'll get the odd game here and there. Rabinho has only just come back to us in the winter window, so can't say much about him. Um, he's 28. Oh, my. I don't even know. <laughs> I don't think I even knew that. Um, he's kind of like a Rooney in a way. Plays, but you don't see too much of him. But, mm, you know, he played better in that 4-3-3 back in Season 2. Do we bring 4-3-3 back? I don't really want to myself, but it could be an option, potentially. I don't know. It might spice things up again. I'm not sure. Uh, Robin, I uh, can't judge him too much. He looked all right when he played a few games um, at the back end of this season, so... Again, I'm not going to say much about him. He's only just joined. Joe Cole, always good. Had an injury scare not too long back. Mm, you know, technique has gone down, but he's still good. At 30, he's still got a few years. Ronaldinho, probably a lot of you are saying, why is he still here? He doesn't fit into... Well, he did fit into the team at, at sort of one point, but he doesn't really fit into the new style of the team. We... I think we tried to sell him off last summer and it just didn't work. And we'll maybe try again. I don't know. Possibly. Foy, he's only just come back. He's not had a lot of games. He scored one or two goals for us, I think, though, this season. So that was all right. He's 26. Could that improve better in the next few years? We'll see. We may hold on to him. He could be a part of a swap deal for somebody else. I don't know. But 
you know, he is a good player. Roberto Carlos just joined. He's um, improved a little bit there already. He's only 17. You can't judge him. You can't judge him at that age. So, yeah, that is my thought so far. Maybe you guys think differently. But that's what it is. On to the point ranking system. So we're nearly there. We're nearly getting to the end. We're getting to the big one, which is the overall assist and goal scored out of everyone. Um, but this is the goalkeeper um, top five. And Khan is still there with a 6.33. Of course, retired players still keep their position. It's kind of, you might say it's a little bit crap that it does that, but that's the way it is. Tolder is still second. We got Vieira there for um, Stuttgart, 6.23. So he's played probably the best keeper this season or whatever you want. Or, or, well, I think it goes by overall. Um, yeah, overall uh, rating for matches played. So there is that Van der Sar there who retired. But what a game he had as a regen in that last game against United. So he's probably going to be up there again over time. Uh, Bafez is the other one with a 6.21. Defenders have all retired. Cafu's one of the ones we've got as a regen, so that's good. Maldini there. Maybe we should consider getting him. Turam, um, Caboni, and uh, Mihelovic. Um, all retired quite a few years. We're into 2012 right now, and look at these. You know, they're all like 2005, 2008 kind of thing, so yeah. Mid midfielders, um, we've got Nedved sitting third, who retired a few seasons ago. Iniesta is on there as number five for us, 6.45. I told you he's good. Uh, we've got Schnellinger for AC Milan, 6.53, and Ardals for Juventus, 6.61. Finally, forward players, we got Aranch, Aranchi, or whatever he's called, for Manchester United, 6.56. You guys are going to have to let me know who this guy is. Because I've, I don't think... Is he... Uh... Is he... <laughs> is, he is he a re... No, he can't... Is he a re... No, is he a regen? Is he either a regen or he's one of the classic players or he's just another player I've not heard of. Um, but he's doing well. And he's, like, getting loads of goals. And even though United are not doing so hot, maybe we need to steal him off United, possibly, with those kind of stats. Um, <laughs> but again, it factors into a lot of different things of whether or not we could afford him, etc., etc. Um, well, we can afford him, but if we swap him, I mean, um, Lopez there, uh, retired a couple of years back, 6.59, Larson, 6.59 also, um, Danielson for Batiste has got 6.61, and, um, Rumenish. Remanish, I, want, I don't know guys, you know me, 6.71. Anyway, this is the sort of exciting bit. At the end of each season, we go through the amount of assists and goals overall. Since season one, and this is what it looks like, to even get on the assist board, you need 69 assists, um, which Diazla has got for Bayern Munich. Baptista for Real Madrid with 70. Ronaldo for us is 71. Most of them would have been at United though but still. Uh, Rubinho, again, most of them, well, probably a bit of Madrid and quite a bit of Chelsea in there. But also, maybe it's a mixture of all three with us because we had him back in Season 2, didn't we? And Season 3, I believe. Or like halfway through Season 3 or whatever it was. Um, Thierry Henry has got 71. Baraja has got 72. Vicente, also for Valencia, has got 74. Van Bommel for Barcelona has got 74. Totti for AS Roma, 74. Roberto Carlos, we retired last year, still got 80, still up there, he's number 7. Stankovic for Inter Milan has got 81. Um, Veron retired this season, It's going to finish on 83. Xavi for AC Milan, who also once played for us, 84. We've got Schneider there with 85 for Ajax, that's probably one of the reasons they're doing so well. Kaka for AS Roma, 86, and the number 1 assist is... Deco for Barcelona, which I think he's been there for ages as, like, number one. So, yeah, 107. And finally, the most exciting bit. Who is the overall top scorer since season one? We're, don't forget, we're eight seasons in. So, here it is. Mackay, who retired last year, is still on there in 16th position with 115. Vieri for AC Milan is 117. In 14th, we've got Ronaldo. Big Ronaldo, that is, for um, <laughs> Real Madrid, 119. We've got Saviola for Sevilla, 120. Not bad, Saviola. Good little player. Um, Pizarro 
um, is 12th for Bayern Munich with 123. Drogba is in 11th for Chelsea with 125. I got Imar for Valencia, 128. Also joint ninth with Totti. Um, with AS Roma with 128. So I've got Cliver for Valencia and Smith for Manchester United. 134. Well, you never really see Smith on the goal scored list. So it's kind of weird that he's on there. I don't know. We just never really see him in the top goal scoring charts or anything like that. Or even the Cups. I don't know. It's, it just seems strange, that one. Maybe earlier seasons take into effect there. Uh, we got Schwartz of 135. Um, he played a season at Barcelona, so maybe one or two for Barcelona there. Well, maybe more than one or two, I don't know. But we'll, we'll, we won't know that stat, will we? Uh, we've got Manchester United and Thierry Henry. Thierry Henry, probably most of them were at Arsenal, the 141. Uh, Torres for us since season... Fr well, the, the after... Well, he was the summer before season three when he joined 143 goals. We've got Michael Owen at Newcastle is on 145. We've got Oliveira at number two. He is second with 167. You know who it's going to be. Who's top? You just know it. The, the, y there's nothing about it. It's Mutu, and he's got 191. So there you go. 191. He's on course to become the first player to hit 200. Can he do that next season? Probably. He could be moving. Who knows? We don't know. We'll see. Honestly, guys, who knows? Who even knows? But that is that. That is the season done with. It's crazy. I can't stop saying that is the one word that sums up this season. It's crazy. And next season, it could even get crazier. So we're going to find out. Um, I don't think I really want to do a review of the season. I, I just think it's been good overall. We've done well. We've won the Cups. We've won the league. Let's just go again next season. Where do we go from here? What players are available? Who's this guy at United who's scoring all these goals? Van der Sar's up, up and coming. we got players retiring and regening. It's still good. It's still crazy. It's still... Let's just keep it going, you know? That's all I can say, guys. And I just want to thank everyone for watching this season. It's been a long season. And it's been a long time coming to an end. So, yeah. Next time, we're going to be against Glee Pilati. So yeah, that's a team that we're going to be playing. <laughs> and um, yeah, that'll be pre-season fixture one. So join us next time, guys. Thanks for watching this episode. Thanks for watching this season. Good night. Take care and God bless. See you then.